Even though our team is happy with Apple Reminders, we can't help but wonder if there's a better app to help us do even more. That is why in this review, we'll be going through Todoist for the iPad. Todoist is a minimalist to-do app that is available on all platforms, macOS, Windows, Android, iPadOS, iOS, and even Linux. Cross-platform support for Todoist is so impressive, you even get extensions for different web browsers and email apps. Of all the to-do apps we have tried so far, Todoist has the best cross-platform support if that is important for your work. It costs $5 per month for individuals and $8 per user per month for businesses. The app is even cheaper if you pay for the year at once, and if you're not sure about it, you can just try it for free. We love apps with free versions that we can use indefinitely. They allow us to slowly get comfortable before committing to a lifetime subscription, more like growing into them. And Todoist allows you to do that. Most to-do apps are simple, with one screen to work on. You can easily toggle the sidebar for more space to work on, but it's better not to do that because navigating the app becomes a bit difficult. Todoist has a few theme colors that are subtle, so it doesn't matter which color you choose really. They're all pleasant to look at, but not too prominent to notice a change. Lists in Todoist, or any to-do app for that matter, are too simple to be called projects. But then again, projects can be as simple as a list and as complicated as you want them to be. Still, to-do apps shouldn't call lists projects. It just confuses users. It's really annoying when developers choose to use ridiculous terms that are unique to their apps even if they're completely incorrect. Like how Apple used AI to mean Apple intelligence. Technology is already confusing. How about we keep some common sense when naming features? Is that really too much to ask for? I love the board look for our lists. That is something our team uses a lot in Apple Reminders. The calendar layout is also a useful one. It would have been better if Todoist integrated with Apple Calendar. Unfortunately, that's limited to Google Calendar and Outlook only. Which do you prefer, board or calendar layout? Creating tasks in Todoist is fairly simple. You can add simple notes to them, which in 2025 is not impressive. There's a simple keyboard toolbar in iPadOS that gives you some basic formatting options for text. So we were expecting to see that in Todoist. You can add a starting date and time, but your deadline doesn't have a timestamp. Kind of makes sense, unless you want to add a time for it, of course. I love that you can add several early reminders for a single task, not just one. Task duration is available. Repeating tasks are a huge pain to use in Todoist, even if it has good natural language support. The app has no repeating presets or anywhere to set repeating options without typing out your repeat. The problem with natural language in to-do apps is that it's a hit and miss. It's not 100% accurate. So it can't be the only way to create repeating tasks in a Good Things Done app. This is one of the reasons Todoist can't replace Apple Reminders for us just yet. The app supports location-based reminders though. Sometimes you don't need a date and time, but rather a place. When you're arriving or leaving a certain place. It's a bit of an inconvenience that we can't attach anything to new tasks when we first create them. We can only do that for to-dos we already have in our list. But once we're over that hurdle, unless we can attach any file to our tasks, 
in Todoist. PDFs, zip files, videos, audios, images, as long as they're less than 100 megabytes, which is not a bad size. Anything bigger, you probably just want to link it to a cloud service instead. It also works better when you're syncing your list across devices. You definitely do not want to be attaching massive files if you want to sync your lists. Lastly, you can tag your tasks and add priorities to them. The priorities in Todoist look a bit funny coming from Apple Reminders, just something I noticed. The colors aren't as obvious as I'd like them to be, but maybe that grows on you over time. Subtasks in Todoist are great because they support levels, up to four of them. What are the chances you need more than that? The list layout displays your subtasks the best, and it also makes them easier to organize. Subtasks in Todoist are also as detailed as your main tasks, and that is always useful when you're working on complex projects or big tasks that you need to break down. Collaborating in Todoist is amazing, much better than the setup we have in Apple Reminders. Once you get over the limitation of collaborating with only five people per list, the comments are definitely my favorite feature in Todoist. You can comment on the whole list or on tasks to continue the conversation on the task at hand. That is definitely a setup we could use in our workflow. The reactions with the emojis are just the cherry on top of an already amazing dessert. Todoist does justice to completed tasks. They are struck out. You'd think it's such an obvious setup to have, but no, some to-do apps don't support that. If, like me, you love your tasks struck out, then you will love Todoist. Not many to-do apps back up your work, but even when they do, like in the case of Todoist, it's still a massive headache. The good thing is it's automatic, even though you have no option to turn it on or off on your iPad. That also means you can't restore or see your backup on the iPad, so if that is the only device you use, that might be a huge problem. It is the most frustrating auto backup system we have seen. We can't help but wonder if not having one at all would be better. But if you do have a PC, then on the desktop version of Todoist, you will have a backup that you can download if you ever need it. The comma points in Todoist are meant to help you stay focused on your goals. If hunger and poverty are not strong enough to keep you focused, perhaps comma points can help. It's one of those cute things I don't get, but if you found them helpful, maybe you could help me out on this one. You can nest your projects in Todoist, that is have lists inside other lists. That is a fine feature to have, especially if your work tends to have multiple layers. You can have up to four levels for your lists and it's more than enough for a to-do app, right? Templates are always great to have. In Todoist, you have templates for different kinds of work. In case you're stuck, this can help you quickly get started. You can also save your own templates, which I find more useful. I have a couple of templates in Reminders that we use all the time, so it's important to save them so you don't keep creating the same list each time you need it. So templates are always great to have in any productivity app. That is it for Todoist. It's a great to-do app, but the natural language repeats and backup that are accessible on the desktop version need some improvement. 
For me personally, it's not convincing enough to leave Apple Reminders though. What about you? What do you think about Todoist on the iPad? Until next time, fantastic human, stay fantastic.